Okay, Paul, we can't leave it there because you said that you got a hundred grand back off a lucky punter that had a pound extra accumulator in two years. What did you do? Send a car around for him? <laughs> yeah, I should have done. It might, it might have been three years. Okay, but I, I mean, this is like when it was it ninety. When did he? When did, I can't remember when he wrote. Ninety six, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, I used to dread the anniversary every year when it came around because he always seemed to have seven rides because the punters would back all these accumulative bets. But there was a couple of interesting um, anecdotes about this detory. So this guy, Richard, had this um, singles and doubles and things. Anyway, the main damage was the uh, accumulator at the morning prices. And I can't remember when, uh, but maybe after three or four races, I hedged, uh, I had an accumulator myself then, well, obviously for the firm, uh, with hills and uh, so that was all taken care of and I could sort of relax a bit and then we, we had this shop in Cardiff and the guy rung up and he gave me some sort of like uh, bet that was going to come to I don't know eight or nine hundred quid and so he said oh by the way while I'm on I better give you this um, it was a Heinz is six I think I, I think oh, they're called Super Heinz or Goliaths I can't remember now it was seven selections Super Heinz Super Heinz. So he, he had done De Torres mounts uh, for 10p, which sounds peanuts now, but the killer was he had a pound each way accumulated on the bo bottom. And this guy told me after about three or four races. And so, because I wasn't very happy about that, uh, in fact, I think afterwards he said to me, I, don't you ever talk to me like that again. And I sort of um, obviously gave him a few choice words. But... Um, Ha the anecdote was that uh, so I was clearly in trouble with this bet uh, and, and I, I couldn't really get on with anybody you know uh, uh, um, obviously all the prices contracted uh, and in a um, I'm not sure if in, in his interview that um, you did recently with Stephen Little if I had any bets that were going to come to uh, uh, a few quid. I, I used to ring him up when he was at a course and have a bet with him, you know, a, a singles. Anyway, I had uh, a £10,000 double uh, to tour his last two mounts. And watching the races, it always seemed to me, I'm a great believer in fate, it was going to happen. You could see the favourite would get in trouble if he wasn't on the favourite or something else. Anyway, he weaved his way round as everyone knows, the last two won. I shan't make any comment about the last race, which I'm, uh, 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 um, I don't want to get myself into trouble with all the other jockeys. But there we go. So anyway, I rang Stephen Little up at about half six on the Saturday, and I said, hi, Stephen, I just wanted to confirm a figure. And uh, I'd won 54,000 off of him. And I said, oh, I just want to confirm the figure of this uh, 10,000 pound double. And Stephen used to uh, write his bets down. He used to have a piece of card around his arm. And he used to write all these bets down on this card, sort of elastic, it's all a bit basic. And uh, he said, uh, 10,000 pound double? Oh, I don't know anything about that. So, so that was like a sleepless night. So he said, ring me back in the morning. So anyway, I rang him back in the morning and he'd written it in the corner, you know, Pickwick's 10,000 pound double. And give Stephen his credit, I think by the Tuesday, after, after the uh, happening on Saturday, I had my money. Anyway, I, I, I backed uh, the, with this uh, uh, accumulator with um, Hills, and I'd won about 140 grand. Uh, and I needed, obviously, uh, uh, um, the money to pay the customers. And so I, um, it was probably about 130,000, because we lost a bit on the bets. Uh, um, but, so I rang Hills, and Hills used to settle their accounts alphabetically, one half of the alphabet one week, the other half the following week. And so Pickwick, when, when I rang up, uh, we were in the second week. And then um, when I asked for sort of special dispensation to get my money uh, so I could pay the punter, uh, the signatories, because it was such a large amount of money, one of them was sick, they needed two, ch two checks, uh, two, two signatures on the checks. But eventually I got my money. And all I would say finally about the Detroit thing was that uh, at that time, I think it was when scratch cards came out, it, it gave us a big boost, bookmakers in general, because we, it proved that we could uh, pay and people could win a lot of money. And, um, and, and it was very good for the business, I think. 
Right, moving on now to the present day, you're now in a partnership with one of the oldest bookmaking firms in the country on course, uh, Jack Bevan and Co, uh, established 1897. How did that come about? Well, that came about because I, would get, I got to, well, I knew his dad, I knew Ian, Paul's dad, and uh, so we used to talk as you do at the races, you know, and we, you know, uh, whilst I said, uh, I don't run, I'm not one of these bookies, goes around at different people's books, see what, when they're off and see what's happening. But I would talk to him about it, you know, have a look at his computer, he'd come and look at mine, that sort of thing. And we would have the same sort of uh, view, you know, we'd want the favourites to be a loser, second in, straight across if you like, and the rest winners. And so, um, with, the, with the expenses of the midweek racing, uh, we decided to go into partnership. So we've been doing that for four, I can't remember, time goes faster, faster, I guess, when you're enjoying yourself, um, for about the last four or five years. And he has this, um, whilst I said earlier on, uh, my daughters uh, work for us a lot of the time. Uh, Ian, uh, who's the mainstay uh, of, um, of Jack Bevan, uh, has been with them for years and years and years. He, he is the main person. So we were able to cut down on a number of staff and we um, uh, have this partnership, which uh, from my point of view um, is very, uh, is very um, I'm very pleased with. Okay, so you work with your wife and family as well on your part of the business. How do you separate uh, from the working day when you're having a bad run? Um, well, because we don't stand the horses for a fortune, I, I think I've got more mature, I suppose, is the answer to that. As you get older, you take it on the chin. Uh, I try to, um, I try not to be too much of a mood. I don't think the girls, my daughters, uh, know uh, about uh, how we're done, but I think uh, my wife will take, uh, uh, the, um, perhaps would disagree, she will say when I come through the door, but, but because, I don't have these winning four grand, doing three grand days. Um, I just sort of accept it more now. Okay, what's the most frustrating thing about being a racecourse bookie? Most frustrating thing? Uh, I get a bit irritated with the guys on the gate because we can't. We're supposed to be able to drive in two hours before, and you get there two and a quarter hours, and they won't let you in. Um, that's a frustrating thing. Uh, apart from that, I, I don't know. I, I uh, um, it would be trivial things like food. You know, you you uh, the food can be disappointing. Some race because some race because are very good. I mean, I don't bet on Newton Abbott anymore, but um, uh, but the, the 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 menu there was always very good. Okay, sir. So do you get many disputes? Um, the only uh, um, occasionally. Uh, the, so. Uh, for those that don't know, the, 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 if, uh, if you can't resolve it yourself, you, you refer to the betting ring manager. Uh, but um, since the buying and selling came in, um, maybe about 99 or 2000, we get printed receipts now, so that has cut down on disputes immeasurably. Uh, we get lost tickets, they have to fill in a lost ticket claim form. Uh, but by and large, we don't get we don't get too many disputes. Okay, so do any of your customers still get credit? Definitely not. So they don't knock you anymore. Is no, that why no, they don't no. get credit? That's right. Yeah. Uh, uh, I had enough of that when I had the betting shops and other credit business. So what's the biggest pro problem that the the betting ring faces at the moment, or do you think it's quite in rude health? Um, there's a danger of us all talking it down. As I said earlier, I think the Fridays. Saturdays, sun, uh, well, Sundays is more of a family day. Uh, the festivals, uh, you know, the Easter Mondays, they're, they're still good. Um, during the week, I think, well, I, I've gone in with uh, Paul Metcalf, we've got this partnership, which has cut down on our costs. Um, I think that um, during the week, it is more of a struggle. As I said earlier on, I can't really understand how so many people survive. Um, because you know the cost of the badge goes up every year and it's um it can be quite expensive okay so what would you like to see done to help racecourse bookies um well we when we, we've all signed up the, these contracts of tenure that we have now with um uh, the race course i think perhaps what wasn't envisioned was um the cost of the badge when uh, for example, it's a concert there, uh, and the profile of the customer, 
I mean, I've got nothing against them. I don't really know anything, anything about them. But say, for example, if Little Mix is going to be the uh, headline act, then you're going to get a lot of young people there who are not going to be punters. Uh, I, th I think that uh, and our, our um, badge fee is a multiple six or seven times the entrance fee. So if the, if, the, if, the, if the customer is paying 40 quid, which is unbelievable value, uh, you know, if you get sort of, uh, uh, um, you know, you get pop entertainment, a group, uh, you've got, say, a uh, Newbury, you get six or seven good class races uh, um, for like 40 quid. But the trouble is, you know, our badge will be £280, then we could pay for the staff to get in. So I think um, perhaps that could be addressed as to, uh, uh, you know, reducing the... Uh, we don't actually on those days pay. There ought to be a ceiling on, on what our, the maximum our badge can be. Okay, and what can bookies do to help themselves? Stop moaning. Um, <laughs> um, and, and moving on to the, into the future, what can they do to bring the betting ring up to date? Um, I think you could continue to innovate. Uh, so I'm not putting ourselves up as like a trailblazer. But for example, uh, um, Paul's much younger than me. Uh, he, he um, we now do contactless payments. I, I got a bit sort of um, fed up with customers saying to me, can you tell me where the nearest cash point is? And even in your like social life, you know, away from the race course, you go and have a coffee, everyone pays on their phone. So we, we use, we, we offer contactless payments now, uh, which seems uh, particularly at the busier meetings, very successful. Okay, so sell it to me. There's so technology, all... so technology is the future. Okay, so a lot of punters moaning online. They can't get on. They get their bets cut back. So why should punters, punters that struggle to get on online, start making their way back to the race course? Sell I, it to us. I don't think they would get knocked back at all. Okay, you, you can you, you can quite often back a horse. Uh, that is the everyone knows that uh, you know on our laptops we have Betfair or BetDAC. Uh, that is sometimes. Uh, our price is bigger than the price which is available on the, on, on the exchange because we want to lay it, uh, uh, not for any um, dubious reasons, uh, uh, just for that, um, for example, I, I, I want to get the favourite in, you know, and if I have to go nine to four and it's only two to one available, uh, so be it. So I think there's tremendous value. It's very competitive and tremendous value. So the punter should come and, and uh, give it a go. Okay, finally, Paul, how do you see the future of the betting ring? Are you an optimist? Uh, well, I'm a bookmaker, so I'm always an, always an optimist, optimist rather. Um, yes, I'm, I, I'm optimistic about the future. Uh, there's, um, I'd like to see more younger people coming into the game. Um, as I said earlier on learning the trade, but yes, I am an optimist about the future. Um, I think more and more of us will do things like contactless uh, payments, uh, which encourages young people. Uh, I think we've got to try and um, not be so, you know, people come up very shy and coy and don't, you know, sort of excuse me, you know, as though that they're um, doing us a favour having a bet. You've just got to make them feel more relaxed and be friendly and pay out with a smile. Brilliant. All good. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Simon, for uh, interviewing me.